they just keep getting bigger and bigger. And it makes me a little nervous. Let's explore. The world's largest precious metals firm has just grown dramatically. This is a firm and a company that's been around since 1965. In fact, many of us very much enjoy a lot of their earlier bullion that they have produced. The Amark Precious Metals Bars and Rounds were kind of uh, considered vintage silver and, and highly sought after in this community. But nonetheless, the company has come a long way to a point now where they have gobbled up a lot of different companies and have taken little bites and pieces of others to become the world's largest precious metals company. And we're going to talk about a news story that was just released recently here about how Amark Precious Metals is now moving outside of North America. That's right. If you enjoy stories like this where I cover the news with regards to precious metals, I hope you will consider pressing that thumbs up button down below and subscribing to the channel. I tend to cover a lot of different topics on this channel with regards to precious metals. I've seen some new viewers come in to the fold here in the community and specifically do this channel from which I'm very grateful. So I hope you will stick with me as we cover the news and topics and enjoy these metals that we hold so dear. And no matter what companies do, no matter uh, what kind of conglomerates that there are uh, comprised, once you have the metals in your possession, well, they are unchanging. They are consistent, just as they have been for thousands of years. And that's a perspective that I want to hold on to, and that's a running theme on this channel. Uh, hence why we refer to it as salivate metal. That's right, we drool over the prospect of being able to accumulate and, and hold on to these metals that transcends space and time. And it transcends epochs, generations, uh, nation states, politics, um, empires. And that is the beauty of what gold and silver indeed have done. They have been money for thousands of years. So this Amark Precious Metals, being a, a leading fully integrated precious metals platform, announced that it has entered into a definitive agreement to purchase a 25% ownership, that's a quarter for those of you in Rio Linda, in the, a United Kingdom-based company, which owns and operates through a wholly owned subsidiary, subsidiary Adkins Bullion and Coins, Adkinsons is really what it is, how it's pronounced, for a cash consideration of $2.75 million, according to a press release from the company. Founded in 1990, Atkinson's is a leading United Kingdom-based online retailer of precious metals, bullion, and coins. Let me know for those of you, so those of my friends in the United Kingdom, have you dealt with Atkinson's? And this very well uh, could be a game changer, uh, and maybe not for the better. Uh, so Atkinson's is being uh, selling 25% interest in this uh, to a Mark Precious Metals, and that seems to be how they kind of creep in is through this uh, through this type of activity. Atkinson's reported revenue of over 130 million dollars in calendar year 2022. In connection with the agreement, a Mark and Atkinson's will enter into a three-year supplier agreement which includes a renewal provision. AMARC will also be granted an option exercisable no sooner than 24 months after the closing to purchase an additional 24.5% ownership interest in Atkinson's, which, if exercised, would uh, increase AMARC's ownership interest to 49.5%. Wow. So there you go. As you can see how they creep in and then they gain a larger ownership through time. It's only a matter of time before they just gobble up yet another entity, this time in the United Kingdom, overseas. The AMARC team and I are impressed with Atkinson's track record within its direct-to-consumer market, said AMARC CEO Greg Roberts. This transaction represents our first investment outside of North America and expands our international footprint as we continue to focus on growing 
our direct-to-consumer base and geographic reach. Yes, it's only a matter of time before they conquer the whole European continent and then move into Asia. It's crazy. You know, they can literally be a, the world's dominant precious metals company at the rate they're going. We are delighted to welcome the team at AMARC to the Atkinson's family, said Paul Atkinson, CEO of Atkins, Atkinson's Bullion and Coins. From our initial meeting, it was obvious we shared the same values for exceeding our clients' expectations and delivering market-leading products and services at competitive prices. Uh, well, at this point, uh, they will be competing only with the other dealers in the United Kingdom, and they may be able to undercut them through volume, uh, which will make it harder for those other small businesses. But nonetheless, that's kind of another story, uh, a larger reach, a larger uh, issue at play that we're seeing throughout this, uh, it, uh, this types of thing that has occurred here in North America. Uh, we are confident this partnership will support and enhance our ambitious growth plans. A Mark's experience will be invaluable to our strategy. Yes. They will grow um, with uh, half ownership with AMARC, ownership, uh, sharing ownership completely, and maybe just a matter of time before they're swallowed up completely by it. Their proposed transaction is expected to close on March 2023, subject to customary closing conditions. And again, we understand that AMARC Precious Metals uh, integrated precious metals platform and offers an array of gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and copper bullion, numismatic coins, related products to wholesale and retail customers via a portfolio of channels. That's the understatement of the press release for sure. The company conducts its operations through three complementary segments, wholesale sales and ancillary services, direct to consumer and secure lending. The company's global customer base spans sovereign and private mints, manufacturers and fabricators, refiners, dealers, financial institutions, industrial users, investors, collectors, and e-commerce and other retail customers. They pretty much make up the, uh, a big chunk of the precious metal supply chain. Amark's wholesale sales and ancillary services segment distributes and purchases precious metal products from sovereign and private mints. As a U.S. mint authorized purchaser of gold, silver, and platinum coins since 1986, AMARC purchases bullion products directly from the U.S. mint for sale to customers. They have also have outstanding distributorships with other sovereign mints, including Austria, uh, Australia, Canada, China, Mexico, South Africa, and, yes, the United Kingdom's Royal Mint. The company sells more than 200 different products to e-commerce retailers, uh, coin and bullion dealers, financial institutions, brokerages, and collectors. In addition, AMARC sells precious metal products to industrial users, including metal refiners, manufacturers, and electronic fabricators. It gives you an idea. And the press release actually goes on and talks about their acquisition of JM Bullion, Provident Metals, Cyber Metals, Silver.com, GoldPrice.com, Goldline, JM Bullion, it's crazy. They're in, they have their fingers out in a lot of these different areas and a lot of these different companies. And so there you have it. It is quite something to see uh, this, this occur and take place and move uh, overseas. You know, I think it's only a matter of time before we see them make a way into maybe even the German market. Um, I would not be surprised to see. I know there's a couple of German distributors and we know that Hong Kong has some distributors as well. Um, one very prominent one makes me wonder how long that's going to be before they uh, infiltrate that market as well. But there you have it. Um, and, you know, and again, uh, I assume this is all above board and illegal. I mean, it would be obvious they, they couldn't grow and expand without such a case. But at what point is it does it become a monopoly? That's what I really want to know, uh, especially when they control so much of the supply chain. That's kind of the problem with big business. It gets so big and, and it becomes essentially a bureaucracy that it's very difficult to really make sense or to uh, know uh, what each section is doing at any given time. And they don't become as efficient, which means that they can essentially charge more because they are the biggest. Or maybe in a sense they become so efficient in some manner or form they're able to do more with greater headroom 
uh, because they don't have to worry about middlemen because they are the middleman. They're the beginning and the end of the transaction from mine, essentially, to broker to distributor to a point of sale. Um, just what point does it become too big? Uh, it does make you wonder and it makes you maybe even think about uh, the competition and some of these other companies out there, directed consumers, that uh, have not taken this path and, uh, and maybe even considering, you know, what, uh, how that kind of effect is going to have on their bottom line as they have to undercut in order to uh, make ends to be competitive in price. Um, so it makes you think about who you would consider um, doing business with down the road. Um, and I don't know, it just seems very strange, unusual. But uh, here we are. Very interesting uh, indeed. I never thought I would see this, but this is a story that I've been following for quite some time on this channel and will continue to. Uh, and again, I mean, I've had some dealings with a lot of these organizations um, and have reviewed some of these silver coins, even have my silver round at one of them. And so that entity itself and others, you know, have no problem with. There's enough separation, I think, as far as the management is concerned with some of these companies. And so far, they're able to provide a good services still, I think, and I think it's smart, but I worry about it, where it could go in the future. Right now, it may seem okay, um, and there are some good competitive companies that have sprouted up that can provide some really good prices, uh, but uh, a lot of these bullion dealers that we deal with that are under the AMARC umbrella, a lot of them have done very well, and they're still providing good customer service and, and prices. Uh, but I worry where this could lead down the future. That's my only concern here uh, because essentially we're leading to towards kind of a conglomerate monarchy of sorts uh, or a monopoly. I'm sorry, not monarchy, <laughs> but nonetheless, there it is. So let me know what your thoughts are on this situation in the comment section below and this sort of news alert here on what's going on with AMARC and their acquisition and moving overseas. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to all of you for taking the time to watch this video and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.